Morning guys. Not been sticking an awful lot up on YouTube lately. Things have been pretty hectic. Um, not the VL Turbo kind either. Just really busy. Lots of stuff going on uh, with maintenance at work and obviously range of parts, ranges and out of work as well. Busy all round really, so um, when I might get a bit of time. I've done a couple of videos but I haven't had a chance to edit them. When I get time, I'll stick them up and I'll do some more like brake pad change, cam belt change, all that good stuff. And uh, now Charlie's trucked back down the field, we can start having a go at that. And um, the idea is there'll be like a little build series going up on YouTube of you know stripping it, taking the cab off. Well, there'll be a video on splitting the cab and chassis, taking the cab off. Um, we're going to pull the engine and gearbox out. It's only a 70k engine. Um, and basically, like, make him a bitter. So we got Herbie's axle changed last night and all switched over. Bled the brakes again and rigged up the handbrake cable. Adjusted the shoes for him. And so far, you know, um, his old diff was absolutely fucked, honestly. Um, he said it was spurred oil out the pinion seal. And like, no sooner we took it off and landed it on the ground, it just leaked out the front pinion seal. So it must be rhubarb, there must be nothing left of it. Just on the way into work, and I forgot to tell you guys, there's a little bit of a top secret project going on. So keep your eyes peeled in the next month or so. Um, there'll be a little bit of a change to the back of Black Thunder. That's on the go, that's all right work in progress at the moment. I'll keep quiet on it because I want it to be a little bit of a surprise. But yeah. So to check this um, pressure regulator you're gonna need a special socket which is kind of like um, almost like the opposite of an open-ended spanner I guess but a socket um, to get over onto that pressure relief valve. That was going on to something else somebody said about the bottom o-ring. Now obviously there's two o-rings on the pressure relief valve and if the top one fails you'll see it because it'll pee out the top of the pump. But if the bottom one fails there's nothing to really say so, you know. So I thought yeah I'll pull that out then check the bottom o-ring because what could be happening potentially is it could be bleeding through past the o-ring and then once I get to say 3000 rpm the flow of the pump is enough to overcome that little leak um, and we're back to normal timing so I think that might be what it is. So the symptoms I've been having is uh, first and second gear accelerates you know fine she gets going fine but when you get in the third there's a bit of a flat spot after 2000 and up to 2800 um, but if you roll on the throttle lightly it's not there so I'm thinking well it's you know, fuel delivery through the pump. It's not pushing enough fuel for the demand when you go flat to the floor and ask for all of the fuel from the head. The, uh, the vein pump can't keep up with the delivery and the pressure's dropping off. So, um, but once you get to 3000 or 2800, once you get to 2800, um, you know, if it's back to normal and it seems fine. So, either 2800's where the vein pump's keeping back up again and keeping up with it. A, a leak past an O-ring on the pressure relief valve, or B, it's got enough you know, strength in it to overcome the time in advance and bring it back in. Um, but I should think by about three and a half, four, the time in advance is pretty much maxed out anyway, um, because obviously that's up to a hard stop on that little cover. So, yeah, anyway, those are the symptoms I was having. All right, so I'm just about to check this pressure relief valve and put it out the front of the pump, but as always, Cleanliness is godliness. So, just gonna go in there with my toothbrush. Hey, hey, and give it a little scrub in there, look, like that. Oh, fantastic. This is fantastic. Oh, best day ever. Mm, me too. So, uh, yeah. Best day ever. Clean that out so that no crap Perfect falls in. So this is the pressure relief valve and this only has four ports on this one compared to the EDC pump that had six. And this O-ring, it looks in okay shape to be honest, so we shall put it back. Down in there is where it lives. 
So just to show you guys what the EDC pump pressure relief looks like, as you can see the holes are a lot bigger and she's got six ports, like spill ports in there and it's got 32 on it, I don't know what that 32 means but that's the number it's got on there and uh, now this is like a this is like this bottom bit is a retainer to stop that bottom bit actually springing out and then above this little piston there's a spring and a little push fit plug and the way you bump the pressure up on these is that you get a dot punch basically and dot that down further and further into the bore and squish the spring further down and they do it on a test stand and to adjust all the case pressure and stuff. It's all quite complicated, but yeah, this case pressure, among other stuff, um, ultimately decides what the pump's going to do. So this is a pressure relief valve off an EDC pump, so that's Mark II Electronic. And this one's got quite big spill ports, as you can see, and there's six of them. So basically, beneath that little retainer ring in the bottom, there's a piston. A spring and then this push fit plug and the way you increase the pressure is you tap down on that plug and you know inch it further down into that bore which puts more pressure on the spring so this opens later so yeah like I say I've been invited out the 1st of August for a Greek laning day down near Hinstead which is in Norfolk I just made another little project. Whilst I've been at work, I've been mulling this over again and again. And um, I'm going to make an adapter to go on the back of the return banjo to monitor the case pressure. So I'm going to make a little extender. It's basically uh, M12 for 1.5, male or female. But halfway along, it's going to have a little T piece. And I can run that to a little hose and a bit of gauge. And um, I think 0 to 150 psi gauge would be alright, but I'm not sure. From what I can tell, most of them max out at about 5 bar. But obviously, every pump's different. I don't know what this is set at, so 150 should be more than enough. Um, there's probably a special Bosch tool, but God knows what it's called and God knows where you buy it from because I can't find one. So I should just make it and then give it a crack. What else can you do, eh? But yeah, like like tonight, it's uh, me and Mrs. anniversary. So I shan't get much done on the truck tonight. And I know what you're all thinking, leave that bloody truck alone for a night. But yeah, I've got a list of things to do. So um, like I say, yeah. So I won't get much done tonight on the truck. Tomorrow, I've got to do a post office run after work and then I'm going to meet Chai down the field again and we're going to start stripping his old truck. <laughs> Alright, just talk to spec. Two inch lift block in there as well, yeah. So that's going to be just to roll it round on whilst the back axle's away.